Rand Pegnell's squad look to keep their unbeaten starts to the season alive as they travel to North Dakota to take on the Fighting Hawks. And women's ice hockey took on Harvard looking for both their seventh consecutive win and first ECAC conference win this season. Soccer, volleyball, field hockey, rugby, and Matt Mugno all coming up on Sports Pause. From East Coast to West Coast, we're here to bring you all the latest on Quinnipiac sports on this electric edition of Sports Paws. I'm Emily Sweeney, and next to me is Ben Kane. Now, Ben, why don't you start off with filling us in on last week's hockey war in the West? Yeah, of course, Emily. And what can be considered their most difficult test of the season, the men's ice hockey team traveled out West to face off against the recently ranked number three team in the country. For the first time in the history of this matchup, the game ended in a tie. The Bobcats came into this game losing the series and holding a record of 1-5. However, with help from Cipollone, Tellier, Quillen, Friedman, and McGee, the Bobcats tied their Friday night matchup against the Fighting Hawks by a score of 5-5. Although he conceded 5, last year's Hobie Baker finalist stood on his head between the pipes, making 38 saves, including a stellar second period performance with 19. One area that definitely needs some work heading into Saturday's rematch would have to be the power uh, penalty kill, excuse me as Rand Pecknell's men conceded two goals in the five penalty kill opportunities. And that rematch comes just 23 hours after their first matchup against the Fighting Hawks, as they looked, the Bobcats looked to try and sway the series in their favor. Quinnipiac looking to rebound, like I just said, after tying the Hawks on the previous night. We're going to go right into the first period, and the Bobcats are going to strike first, keeping possession. Skylar Brindamore puts that one in the back of the net, rattles it home, one nothing Bobcats. Just three minutes later though, however, North Dakota gonna fight back and they literally push the puck into the back of the net. They're gonna tie this one up. And you see the celebration there, such quick back and forth action in this first period. When we're not done yet there, as the Fighting Hawks are gonna continue to go through Reese Gabler, who rifles one right off the face off. He's gonna make it two to one North Dakota. And that'll be all the action for the first period. So we're gonna head to the second. And now, we're going to move into the second. The Bobcats come roaring back. A shot from Jaden Lee ricochets off the stick of TJ Friedman to tie the game at two. Bobcats, however, like North Dakota, they're not done yet. As Desi Burgart scores on the breakaway, makes it 3-2 to two Bobcats. Now the power play unit decided to add another as Friedman tucks that one home as his shot hits off the stick of Ethan DeYoung. And we're going into the third period. The Bobcats, like in class, they learn from their previous mistakes and then not to let the gas off the pedal. And uh, Ethan DeYoung scores his second of the game as well. You see the celebration there. They know they're winning this one. 6-2, to two, the final score in North Dakota, and they take down the number three ranked team in the country. With murmurs across the country of where these two teams would move after their matchup, the latest UHCHO polls are out to put those rumors to rest. Well... Hold on to your skates, folks, because things just got interesting. After Quinnipiac's undefeated series against North Dakota, they have almost swapped positions in the rankings, with the Bobcats now sitting third in the country and the Fighting Hawks falling all the way down to seventh in the polls. Just one week ago, the Bobcats were ranked in eighth place, and then they have received three first place votes in the latest polls. Previous number one ranked Denver have fallen all the way to fourth position, with previous number two ranked Minnesota taking home top spot followed by Minnesota State. Full screens, highlights, and the two of us can only go so far in describing this Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team, which is why we will bring in a reinforcement in men's ice hockey beat reporter, Matt Mugno. Now, Matt, you know the team, so what are the biggest takeaways from this North Dakota series? Emily, bring in the asset. Big game expectations this week, and they're facing the number three team, North Dakota, on the road. 18 combined goals in the series on the weekend. We learned that the Bobcats can score at will, in bunches and they surrender them in rapid succession at times. So we learned some good things, we learned some things that the team needs to tweak and they had a really great series. Now, the biggest thing that I took away from this series was that this is what you should expect in big games. We saw it the last few times they were in tournament play, high scoring games, moments where the defense collapsed, moments where the goaltending wasn't always there. It's all about tying all those things together, being able to score at will, and learning that the, the big games, you can't control everything that happens. You have to ride the wave sometimes. 
Now we just talked about takeaways and Matt, when I think of takeaways, I think about food delivery. In that food delivery, there's always a star of the dish. Matt, who do you think was the star of the dish on Rand Pecknold's plate in the big win over North Dakota? Ben, where do I begin? 11 Bobcats recorded a point, 11 goal scorers in the series. So you had a lot of players contributing, almost half the roster. There's 18 skaters, so more than half the roster contributed. You have a whole team contributing on offense. Colin Graff, a transfer from Union, continuing his success on the power play with two assists. Sam Lipkin as a screen man. Skyler Brynamore scoring. Some of the fifth years scoring as well. Burgart coming up clutch again. We always see him coming up with clutch goals. So many players contributed, like Ethan DeYoung, who's showing some offensive prowess and playing with aplomb on the power play in the bumper position. So we've seen a lot of players contribute in this series, and that's why they succeeded. I really think that the defense also showed up. They were able to shut things down, and they were also contributing in the two-way game as well, getting pucks in on that. Metsu with a great assist on the day young power play in the second game. They did everything right. I'll stick with this delectable dish scenario. Now, now that we know the star of the dish, what's that extra ingredient that makes the team even better? And how can the Bobcats build on what they already have looking forward to their main matchup? Now, Ben, Emily, I know you guys love the spice. You love the sauce. I think that they just should continue doing what they've done on offense. We've never seen the Bobcats score at will like this, really in program history. I think continuing on offense is going to be what's going to contribute to another win this weekend in the main series. I think that defensive play, they should shore up. Uh, I, I'm sure these are things that are being gone. They're going over these things in practice on the penalty kill. It's really not about the penalty, penalty kill, Ben. I think it's mar the march and parade to the box. When you're marching to the box and you take five penalties in a game, your penalty killers get tired and you're relying on them to do the dirty work. It gets tiring. They're putting in more time on the ice. It's tougher to defend than it is to be on the attack and start the offense, uh, start the defense in the offensive zone with the four check. So I think it's about limiting the amount of penalties you're taking, not doing so in rapid succession, keeping the foot on the gas with the offense, as you'd mentioned, with how they broke open the game in the second game by untying its 2-2 uh, two -two game and also not blowing the lead. We've seen that consistently in the last few years in, program, in the program's history, and I think the blowing of the leads is something that they're going to have to work on as well in big games like this. Thanks, Matt. We did just bring in men's hockey beat reporter to help us out, but I've got some news of my own for this team. Now, we talked about how this team skated into a Game 2 victory, but there is also some icing on that cake that came out of this as well. Graduate student Ethan DeYoung was awarded ECAC Forward of the Week after checking in three points on the weekend, adding to his statistics board one assist and two goals against number three ranked North Dakota. After the weekend slate, DeYoung also led the league and is ranked 16th nationally in goals per game. Now from awards to starting ECAC play with six non-conference wins under their belt, Quinnipiac women's ice hockey looked to their game against Harvard to secure their first in-conference victory. Not only did the Bobcats secure the opening ECAC hockey win, but they also kept their seven-game streak win alive, defeating Harvard 5-2 in Cambridge with two goals from Lexi Agia and one goal apiece from Veronica Bach, Madison Chandler, and Shea Maloney. Although these goals were nice and these were the goal scorers of the game, many Bobcats were able to record points in this matchup. Quinnipiac really showed their teamwork as 11 different Bobcats, including Jess Shriver, Alexa Hoskin, and Olivia Mobley, were all able to add onto their stat sheets. Captain Lexi Agia didn't only score two goals in this game, she also reached a very impressive milestone as a Bobcat. Now, before I share what she was able to do, let's take a second to think about a scenario. Collecting pennies seems to be a very simple task, right? So to collect 100 pennies would seem easy, but it would still take a lot of time and work. Now imagine instead of collecting pennies, you were actually attempting to record 100 points in ECAC hockey as a Division I athlete. Much more difficult. Well, that is exactly what Captain Lexi Agia was able to accomplish. Agia getting her 100th point this past weekend now belongs to the 100-point club at Quinnipiac, which is quite the accolade to receive. With the Bobcats continuing their undefeated journey through non-conference and conference play, let's see where Quinnipiac is standing in the USCHO polls. With skates being sharpened and ice being cleaned, the USCHO Division I women's ice hockey polls have a lot to say. Quinnipiac sits in 7th place out of 15, which is right in the middle of the pack. The Bobcats are ranked just above in-state rivals Yale, who are in 8th, Providence, Vermont, and Harvard are at the bottom three. 
And the top three are the reigning champs, Ohio State in first, Minnesota in second, and Northeastern taking third. Now we have to take our first break of the night, but when we come back, I'll kick it to Ben to see if soccer scored or got stopped in their conference matchups. Plus, we will serve you up some volleyball as Kyle Robinson and his squad had a very busy weekend. Stay tuned. Kevin, I uh, was just going to drive home. Uh, 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 there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man. The selfies. <laughs> selfies. Nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man. Let's put a ride home. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here, he's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. For what? No. Welcome back to Sports Pause. From a squad running up the score sheet to a team hoping to top the standings, let's take a look at how the men's soccer team performed this weekend on their quest for a playoff berth. The Bobcats continued their hot start to the season in emphatic fashion, knocking off the Bronx by a scoreline of 3-0. Sam McGann, McCann excuse me, once again put on a show, scoring two goals off the bench and moved up the leaderboards to second in the MAC for a goal scored right behind teammate and captain David Bersedo. Standout first year, Alexander Sterngard also got on the score sheet and can continues to make a name for himself in the race for MAC Rookie of the Year. The Bobcats also kept a clean sheet for the first time in conference play all season. Riding the high off their win over Ryder, the Bobcats then traveled home to take on the Iona Gales. How about we roll the tapes? Men's soccer looking to remain perfect in the month of October as they welcomed in the Iona Gales to Hamden for a MAC mashup on Saturday. The current four and five seeds in the conference. This one expected to go back and forth the full 90 minutes. It did just that. We're going to hop right into the 17th minute. David Bersedo sends a scorching ball into the box, but Mange punches that one clear for Monmouth. Now here we go. Free kick opportunity for the Gales. Camera flying header back of the net. one nothing. Puts the Iona Gales up some nice backflips there in the Bobcats. They're going to have some work to do to try to get back in this game. So we go early to the second half. Brog Austin lays it to stern guard right here, but it's going to sail over the top of the net on the missed opportunity there for the Bobcats. And then a corner from Austin finds the head of Saunders. Saunders in near post, caught by Mange. Another opportunity, this time from Sekula, saved by Mange. Still 1-0, still excuse me. Versado cuts into his right foot. Shot saved again by Mange. Now finally, Alexander Sterngard corner kick, lofts one deep to the back post. Jared Smith tucks that one in the back of the net. Shirts off, 89th minute, ties the game up one to one. The Bobcats hold on for that final minute to keep the game tied. We saw Ben tackle that highlight. So now let's pass it over to men's soccer beat reporter Dylan Summer on the persistence and perseverance this team showed by fighting till the very end. 
It was desperation time for the Bobcats, and it was no other than Jared Smith who would get this game-tying goal to get the crucial draw with Iona. There were only 40 seconds left to go in the game, and the Bobcats got an opportunity to tie it up on the corner kick. Alexander Sterngard took it and found Jared Smith inside for the game-tying goal, and the crowd was as pumped up as the players. Men's soccer head coach Eric DaCosta said that the grit and determination that his team showed to the end was nothing unusual to him. You know, it's easy for a team to kind of just sit back and accept defeat and move on. But, you know, these guys didn't do that. We, we knew a point would be important and we fought for it till the very end. And, you know, as long as there's time left on that clock, we're going to keep fighting to try to get something out of the game. And, and the boys did that today. And, you know, we put it behind us and we move on. Defenseman Jared Smith also was glad that his perseverance made a tremendous impact to his team. Uh, we fight hard until the last, until the last second. You know, uh, a tough game, uh, a lot of emotion, but we fought through it as a team and uh, we got the tie, which is important. You know, like it's just uh, an unreal uh, feeling and just celebrate my team and it just means a lot. You know, blood, sweat, like all that, just running around for 90 minutes and just, it's just the best thing I can ever feel. You know. After an exciting game against Iona, now the Bobcats will travel to Manhattan to face off against the Jaspers. Reporting for Q30 Sports, I'm Dylan Summer. Thanks, Dylan. With this team that just doesn't quit, stars will rise, and one player stood out and was recognized this week. The player awarded was Alexander Sterngard, and he received Max Soccer Rookie of the Week because of his performances on the field. Sterngard scored a goal on Wednesday for the Bobcats and then aided his team with an assist on the game tying goal on Saturday as well. Overall, Sterngard has four goals and nine assists in the 13 games so far this season. Things are really starting to take shape in the standings for men's soccer and with the Bobcats having just five conference games left, let's see where Eric Dacosta's men stand in the playoff race. Just three points off top spot, the Bobcats are definitely in the hunt for a first round bye. Going to take on top dog Manhattan on Wednesday, then welcoming in bottom of the league St. Peter's just a few days later. Quinnipiac are going to have a tough road ahead of them. Also on the docket for Eric Tocasta's side is second place Niagara, who round out the Bobcats' max schedule as they face off on November 2nd. Now I'm going to cross this one over from the men's team to the women's side as they look to keep their winning streak alive. Got max soccer action in Hamden. The Bobcats are turning after what seems like forever to face off against the Ryder Bronx. We're going to head right into the first half here. Rebecca Cook taking up for a penalty. Shot saved by Ryder. Great save there. Great reflex save and keeps the game tied 0-0. But Paige LeBurge going to cut in on her right foot. Take a shot. Opposite side. Back of the net. 1-0 Bobcats. And now we have Ella Gagno off the assist from Olivia Kujiko. That's going to make it 2-0 in this game. So we'll head into the second half, and once again, it's all Bobcats in this half. Emily Vanderblay intercepts a pass here. There she goes, flip through, Courtney Chokel. Chokel, little dink ball there, back of the net, 3 nothing Bobcats. You're going to see Chokel once again off the corner, flick back post to Rebecca Cook. Look at this goal, left foot, nicely nestling into that top corner. It's going to be 4 nothing. I'm going to keep saying the score here, and we're going to show you one more goal. Anna Costello with this flick into the back of the net. Jared Smith-esque and makes the game 5-0. And the Bobcats going to cruise to victory in this one. Coming off of this 5-0 victory against Ryder, the Bobcats were hoping to ride that momentum through their next matchup against the Iona Gales on Saturday. However, the Bobcats wouldn't find that ride to be an easy one as the Gales were able to, for the first time this season, shut down the Bobcats' offensive forces and leave them scoreless. Not only taking away a win from the Bobcats, but also plucking away an 11-game goal streak for offensive aficionado Rebecca Cook. The Gales' offense then took flight and gained traction with three minutes left in the first half and scored the lone goal of the game. For the second half, the teams went back and forth with neither offense having the ability to get one in the back of the net leaving the Bobcats with a first and very unexpected MAC loss. With the Bobcats standing on top of the MAC last week, did this loss push them off that pedestal? The answer to that question would be yes. Quinnipiac dropped down to the second spot in the MAC women's standings, with Fairfield taking number one and maintaining a four-game win streak alongside Niagara, who is currently right below the Bobcats and in the third spot. However, the Bobcats face three lower middle ranked teams in their final MAC matchups in Manhattan, St. Peter's, and Mount St. Mary's, while Fairfield faces Niagara and Iona, who are both currently in the top four. 
This is making Quinnipiac's chances at moving back to the top much more likely. Now I'm going to kick it up, set it over to the courts, and spike it down to Quinnipiac's volleyball team who had two away MAC matches this past weekend. But let's start with their Sienna start to the week. So we'll get to this Sienna game. The Bobcats are looking to make it two wins in a row as the Sienna Saints came to Burt Con Court to close out their four-game homestand before heading to the road for the weekend. So we'll start with getting into the first set of action here in Hamden. Favai Kimsel Moy digs the ball up, gets it to Damla. Damla sets it to twin sister Yamur, and they'll get a point there. Sienna wins the first set and leading the match 1-0. Let's get into the second set. Yamur Ganesh gets the receive, gets it to Damla. Damla sets it up, and Tenen spikes it on the right side, giving a point to the Bobcats. Quinnipiac will win the second set, and the match will be tied one apiece, heading into the third. Joining into the third set, Quinnipiac Domla sets it to Ariana Diaz, who gets the point there for the Bobcats. But Sienna will win the third set, leading the match 2-1, to one, going into the fourth. Now in the fourth set, Quinnipiac down by one. You're going to see the defense of the Bobcats shining through as the ball goes into their court, off the hands, off the basketball hoop. The Bobcats able to get it over the net, and then there'll be an error on the other side for Sienna, giving the Bobcats the point. The Bobcats not able to recover after being down 2-1. to one. Sienna will take it. 3-1 to one in that game. With a home loss on their minds and a continuously failing record, the Bobcats look to their two-game weekend for a set of wins. In the first set, momentum was shifting and multi-point runs were occurring, but ultimately the Bobcats were able to take it 25-22. to 22. Rider seeking revenge racked up five consecutive points at the start of set two until Coach Robinson called a timeout for the Bobcats, which they came out of swinging and spiking with a 10-1 to one run. An ultimate victory, 25-15. to 15. Then came set three as the Bobcats could smell success and commanded the set with a consistent lead throughout, which resulted in a set three win, 22-25. Overall, the Bobcats will win that in Jersey. Now let's th toss this one down the New Jersey turnpike as the volleyball team stayed in Jersey to take on St. Peter's. For the second time this weekend, the Bobcats knocked off another in-conference rival, but this time it was by a scoreline of three sets to one. Ariana Diaz led the way in kills for Kyle Robinson's squad with 17, and in aces with four. On the defensive end, the Bobcats were able to dig deep and pick up eight blocks across the four sets, compared to the Peacocks' three. On a less positive note, Alexander Tennant snapped her match streak of double-figure kills at 13 games as the Quinnipiac Bobcats hope to keep the win streak alive as they take on Canisius this Saturday. With a full slate of games under their belts, let's dig into the most recent MAC standings. Two wins on the road means the Bobcats climb to seventh in the standings above Ryder, Manhattan, and St. Peter's. In-state rivals Fairfield sit top dog in the standings with an overall record of 15-6, with Quinnipiac's next three games against teams that all sit above them in the standings. Kyle Robinson is going to have some work to do before his team heads down to Disney World for the MAC championship in mid-November. However, with just two more away games remaining out of a possible seven, the Bobcats will be hoping to feed off the energy of, at home as they head into the back end of their season. When we come back, we're going to punt things over to the rugby field to catch up with Becky Carlson's squad. We'll also take a look at what's been happening with the field hockey team and, of course, trek through this week's top five plays. We'll be right back. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot me on this last one. Uh, there it is. Keep going with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. 
I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you gotta keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back and thanks for sticking with us. Now after breaking a six game losing streak, the Bobcats turn to an end of season non-conference matchup against Fairfield to continue growing their momentum. Bobcats started off hot with two first half goals coming from Amelia Mazzarelli and Eva Veldhorst, but they just couldn't play the full 60 minutes against Fairfield, an issue that is not new to the Quinnipiac Bobcats field hockey team as they then let up five unanswered goals from the Stags in the remainder of that game. Coach Becca Main's group is currently 5-10 overall and 1-4 and in conference, with only two Big East battles left where they compete against Villanova and Providence before the championships take place. With the end of the season vastly approaching, the Bobcats seem to be cornered at the bottom of the standings, but let's take a look. Quinnipiac is currently sitting in 7th place out of 8 with only a winless Georgetown below them. Liberty sits on top of the hill with an undefeated 5-0 record. Old Dominion and Yukon then follow Liberty and both stand at 4-1 of a record on their season so far. The other three teams that sit in the middle are Temple, Providence, and Villanova respectively. Quinnipiac is ranked below both of their remaining opponents. However, it is close enough that the Becca Main squad could move up in the standings before the season ends. Now I'm going to give a rugby a try as Becky Carlson's squad took on in-state rival Sacred Heart this past Saturday. Junior Kat Story put on a clinic on the field and in her team's return to Hamden for the first time in almost a month, the Bobcats came out on top with the scoreboard painted 44-5 in favor of Quinnipiac. Story had a game-high three tries and in her past three games has reached the try zone in an impressive six times. Quinnipiac now moves to 4-0 against the Pioneers since 2020. With this result, the Bobcats improved to 2-1 at home and 3-3 overall this season. With the victory over the Pioneers still fresh on our minds, let's take a look at their NIRA standings. The Bobcats find themselves in the middle of the standing scrum in 5th place. The powerhouse that is Dartmouth are the only remaining unbeaten team in the NIRA and are perched at the top of the standings. Harvard, Army, and Brown all fall in line after the Big Green and are the four teams that remain above the Bobcats. With two games remaining this fall against LIU and Mount St. Mary's, the Bobcats are hoping to capitalize on their previous success against these two teams to move up in the national standings. We've gone through ice hockey, soccer, volleyball, field hockey, and rugby, but which of these plays made the top five? Let's get into it and see who cracked the list. I'm, I'm going to take the odds on this one. I'm going to start it off. Top five plays of the week. Number five coming from volleyball versus Siena. We're taking it to the volleyball courts. Favi Kimso-Moy makes a diving dig. The Bobcats are going to recover that point. Now for play number four, I'm going to bring it over to field hockey with Amelia Mazzarelli getting past two defenders there. You see her juking left and right. She's going to take a cross shot and a goal in the right corner for the Bobcats. The Bobcats are going to end up winning that game 3-1. to one. You take field hockey. I'll take men's ice hockey. And to the ice we go for number three. Bobcats flying in transition. Michael Lombardi gets the puck and goes east, west, and back again as Deggie, Desi Burgard, excuse me, puts that one home. We're going to go slow-mo in here. Deke around the goalie. Burgard back of the net. For play number two, I am going to stick with the field hockey versus Georgetown matchup, but I'm going to go defensive play on this one. Nina Sintor, diving save there for the Bobcats, keeping the Bobcats in the game and in the league. See it one more time, right off of her right foot there and out of bounds, saving the Bobcats from a goal, and they'll win that game, as I said before, 3-1. to one. You talk about a save, talk about saving a point for your team. Alexander Sterngard, ball in the box. Jared Smith, back of the net, 89th minute. He's going to tie this one up. One to one, Bobcats will hold on in that one and tie the Gales. 
With next week's anchors already getting ready to check into the studio, it looks like our time here for Sports Pause is coming to an end. To stay up to date on all things Q30, follow us on Twitter at Q30 Television as well as our website at Q30TV.com. And don't forget to download the Q30 app. From all the producers and everyone behind the scenes, that's Ben Kane. I'm Emily Sweeney. As we say goodnight, fasten your seatbelts for another week of Quinnipiac Sports.